All right, so hello again, everyone. I saw some of you guys um, last week. My name's Liz, and I'm the program manager with Carolina Navigators at UNC Chapel Hill. And I have two more of my students um, this week, Kira and Gargi, that are going to talk to you about their experiences in Argentina and India. And they're going to talk a bit about um, protests and activism as well in those countries um, and give you some background information on those countries. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to them. Yeah, thank you all for um, coming today. It was very fascinating learning about your ice cream flavor <laughs> preferences. Um, but we are going to talk about protests in Argentina and India today because I think it's pretty relevant to all the things that we've seen, um, especially this year. Um, but just a brief, brief background about me. So I um, am a senior now at UNC Chapel Hill studying global studies in Spanish. But if I'd known earlier on that I enjoy environmental studies so much, I probably would have either than that as a major with Spanish. I'm not, I still haven't decided, but it's too late now. I'm already almost done. Nice. So our objectives for today are to identify the types of protests that we see in India and Argentina. I'll be talking about India mostly and Kira will talk about Argentina. Um, and then we wanna kind of help you guys compare the protests that we see in those countries to the protests we see in the US. Uh, like I said earlier, I went to Argentina during the summer of 2019. I was there for six weeks, um, staying in the capital city of Buenos Aires. Um, they speak Spanish there, by the way. It's one of the countries that speak a lot of, well, there are a lot of Spanish speakers there. Um, but they did have, well, they do have a large population of Italians and Germans um, and Koreans and Chinese as well. Um, they're the second largest country in South America after Brazil. Um, and then their Independence Day is actually July 9th, which is not too many days after, but you know, several years after the United States got its dependence, independence. Um, and then I'm sure you've all seen those jackets of like Patagonia. That's the region that it comes from that was inspired by, as well as different other, other types of um, geography that kind of make up the country. And they're very fertile um, flatlands in the center. I know that it's one of the countries that produced a lot of um, soybeans, so. If you like slow products, this is your go-to place. Um, we're gonna transition over into discussing um, protests in both countries. Um, we do have some preliminary questions to get you thinking about the subject of protest, um, what it looks like in the United States historically or modern day, um, as well as certain types of protests that you're familiar with. Um, yeah, if you, for, for the first question, for example, what are some popular forms of protest that you can think of? Um, yeah, feel free to unmute yourself and say it, or you can put it in the chat as well. Or you can answer the second question too. So yeah, the first one, the different ways that people <clears throat> might protest. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Sit-ins. Mm -hmm. Yep, sit-ins. And you can also type in if you can think of any movements in US history that maybe you guys have learned about in school where a protest was used. Rallies, good. Mm -hmm. Walking down the streets. Mm -hmm. Other forms that I can think of include um, like strikes, boycotts, um, yeah, demonstrations, and different movements such as that. Um, and if you can think of any historical movements in the United States in which protest was used as well. Feel free to say those. Um, <clears throat> I know oftentimes protests have to deal with either social issues, economic issues, um, political issues, um, Boston Tea Party, mm -hmm. women's Women right. rights, civil rights. Yeah. So I'm definitely thinking in the, the correct headspace. So. Yeah, I just wanted to familiarize ourselves with some of the examples in the United States, just so we can have a point of reference for when we go into discussing each country and what it has looked like historically up until today and the different types of protest movements that have occurred. Um, yeah. Um, so just to start off, um, although there are many, many very mo various moments in which the protest has been used, um, one of the ones that have lasted for a very long time in Argentina is called um, Madres de la Plaza de Mayo. Um, and so it happened, well, it began in 1977 and it still persists to today. Um, so we'll watch a video very briefly, but just to give you a quick background. So women who had children and grandchildren that disappeared during 
Argentina's last military dictatorship. Um, every Thursday, they walk around the Plaza de Mayo, it's in their capital city of Buenos Aires, um, to demand answers for what happened to their children. And then this video, um, it'll play for just like a minute, but um, it'll give you a little bit more information about the reasons why and the history behind it. Yeah, you can find um, a lot more information um, and several documentaries about um, the military dictatorship that happened in Argentina. It was a very repressive period of time um, that helped, they kind of coincided as well with um, economic reforms that were happening. And so in order to implement these econo economic reforms, they yeah relied on a lot of repression um, and control of the military. And um, I remember when I was down there, I actually had, we went to basically just call it a concentration camp where um, people were sent and we learned a little bit more about the history of the disappeared that's what they're often referred to um, and yeah it's pretty sad history just knowing that people don't know where their family members went to and then in the video itself it said that they found um, like 39 missing people as opposed to you know the thousands that are still have no names so um, yeah long history but you can see the different ways that the Madres de la Plaza de Mayo have been using protests by um, walking around the Plaza de Mayo every Thursday, continuing to have that conversation and demanding to know what happened to their children. So that is a, definitely a pretty powerful form of protest. Um, so more recently in Argentina, there have been um, strikes with regards to the transportation protests. Um, and so we'll watch the video really quickly, but to give you a little bit of background. So I remember the first day that I arrived there, or wait, the, the third day when we were supposed to have our orientation, um, they had to cancel it because the transportation workers, oh, <laughs> transportation workers, um, with regard like the taxi drivers and the soup day, which is their um, subway stations, they were protesting. And so you have different reasons for why they brought up their um, grievances to the to the government, but um, on the left side it talks about the taxi drivers in Argentina holding work stoppages, calling for Uber to not be offered in the country. Um, and yeah, it definitely, according to the workers, it um, takes away some of their sources of income. Um, is because yeah, most people tend to rely on taxi drivers, but as Uber comes into the country, that's you know part of their market that they're not being able to have access to. And we'll just watch like the two one seconds um, of this video and it'll give you a brief, a little bit more information of what the protests looked like, as well as um, the reasons for why they're angry about it. And this has happened in quite a few countries um, with Uber and taxi drivers. I know in Spain there was issues with this, I think maybe also in the UK. Um, and then currently in the U.S., there's some um, controversy back and forth, I think, in California about how Uber drivers are treated as um, uh, what type of employees they are. So they're, mm -hmm. yeah. Can someone working alone solve all the world's biggest challenges? As we overcome the pandemic, isn't collaboration... Sorry, it won't let me skip the ad, so... <laughs> ...way to bring clean water to the world's mega cities and produce enough food. There we go. Brought to a standstill. Around two dozen key intersections in Buenos Aires, blocked by the familiar black and yellow cabs of Argentina's capital city. The stickers say, get out Uber. These drivers convinced the online app is bad news. They don't care about the law, said this driver. They just create all these problems which result in reducing our sources of employment. Uber is also accused of risking passenger safety by offering rides with drivers who aren't licensed or properly trained. The company disagrees, insisting it's permitted under Argentine law Uber continues to operate normally, it said. It has not been prohibited, suspended, or shut down. Is that how much you wanted to show? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So um, 
yeah, as you mentioned, um, Uber has definitely had some controversy in multiple countries. I've heard, um, like you said, in Spain and some other countries as well, where it's either banned or it's you have to be very discreet about how you're getting into the cars. Um, I've heard of actually some violence happening because taxi drivers see that you're getting into an Uber. So one of the things that when I was there, they would tell us you would just sit in the front to make it seem like you were um, taking a, just getting a ride with your friend. Um, I never really had any issues with regards to feeling in danger or anything like that. I felt pretty safe the whole time I was there, but it is something to keep in mind. Just the fact that, yeah, they really viewed it as something that was taking away their income when it already is a very difficult situation with regards to the economy and inflation and then um, Argentina. And then on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see the soup day drivers holding strikes as well um, to protest for better, better working conditions. So they're being asbestos on the B line a couple of years ago. B line is one of the um, routes that you can take on the soup day, as well as more staff and more security. So they had boxes actually that you could pay to, well, you have a card pretty much that you would swipe to get into the, the trains. And so they would have boxes where you could pay money to reload your car to be able to ride. However, when they first opened two new lines, when I got down there, they were having issues because it was overrun as well as the staff not being able to have um, opportunities to work and get a source of income as well. So they were calling for more staff and um, better working conditions. So you can kind of see how, yeah, protests can come in the form of work stoppages and strikes. Um, and it has to deal with either social conditions, economic, issues or um, political issues and many other issues you can see. And a lot of countries or areas that have a lot of public transportation, the transportation strikes can happen quite often. I know in Europe too, they'll, the trains will be stopped or the buses will be stopped when the workers are, are trying to get better working conditions. Yeah, Chile as well actually just experienced, especially last year, they were having a lot of protests. Um, I mean, well, I'm pretty sure a couple of trains were actually set on fire. Um, and then yesterday they, or this weekend, they signed a referendum to change their constitution because it came from the military dictatorship era of um, Pinochet in the 70s and 80s.